How large can, so they asked, what is the magnitude of the direction of the buoyant force on the weight? So the magnitude is 10,000 and the direction is? What is What is the magnitude and direction of the buoyant force on the weight? So what would be the direction of the buoyant oh, force? Uh, yeah, you actually already figured that out when you knew your free body diagram, but it would be important to get full credit if you actually specifically put that in words, or you might not get the credit for that. Okay, how large can the mass of the weight be if the system does not sink? All right, now things are getting more difficult, so let's think about what our next step should be. Okay, so now we're getting into a more serious type of question. And refresh your memory in part C. Uh, tell me if you have any idea how you would go about uh, attacking that. Um, but now the question's getting more difficult. So I think because it says if the blue weight system does not sink, that you know that um, net force equals zero. Like there's no. That makes weight. sense? Mm -hmm. like that's, that's right. Equilibrium. Okay, that's right. Um, and, and then I guess you, my first thought would just be to write all, write out all of the force, all the forces, like net forces. Right. And just, and that actually sounds like a good really idea. Relate the tensions. That sounds like a good idea. Okay, so let's, let's try that okay. and start writing this up down. Okay. What types of stuff do we write down here? Um, so for the buoy, what do we say? F net. Oh, what do we call that? F That's a good start. That's fine. Okay. okay. What about that? And it looks like we know this. Like. That's right. Mm -hmm. We know that's something we already figured out here. That's right. That's right, that's very helpful. We know the second buoyant force, that's what we figured out in the previous part. Okay. okay. Um, so, and then I'm just wondering about that. I don't know that buoyant force. Why not? Because I, I don't, they don't give us how much that is underwater. Okay, now we're definitely getting to the key problems here. Okay. Okay, so uh, let me get uh, caught up with you here. Um, but I looks like you're doing good. It turns out that there, well, I think we are going to be able to figure out this buoyant force for okay. this part. But let me get uh, caught up with you here. So you're basically using um, the net force on object one equals the mass of object one times the acceleration 
of object one. Now we're only going to focus on the y components, obviously, so I don't even have to write that down. Right. So let's see, what is the net force on object one? Well, there's its buoyant force, and that's in the positive direction. And uh, then there's the negative tension, and then the negative weight. I thought you already went ahead and said we already figured out this weight, which was 15,000. And one thing they did that was very good is you were getting all the signs right. So this is going to be negative because this is pointing down. So that would be negative 15,000. And how do we know that the right-hand side of this equation is zero? You work that out. Well, they want it to float, right? Well, if it's floating, it's motionless. And if it's motionless, there's no acceleration. So the acceleration is zero, so this is zero. So I think this is one of the equations you worked out. So that was good. And then you did net force for this one. Object two, so this is good. You saw that since there's two objects, you need two different net force equations. That's something that a lot of people miss. So we need a separate net force equation here. Net force two equals ma2. So now we have a positive tension. I'll put in some dots to show that. I'm just showing magnitudes here. So this is a magnitude. We already figured out um, this buoyant force. Positive 10,000. This weight. And this is going to be floating as well, so this would be zero. Now, the key thing here is that we need to have um, as many equations as unknowns, then we can use algebra to solve. So, how many equations do we have here? Two. And how many unknowns? Um, looks like well, three right now. Three. So, you saw that we're a little bit stuck. Now, it actually turns out, though, that we can figure this out because this picture actually isn't quite accurate now for part C. How would I change this picture for part C? Go back and what's happening in part C? What did part C tell us? Precisely, that's well put. So that's we want it to be submerged. Saying but that they both be submerged. That's right. This is actually a problem where the better students get penalized because the weaker students might not even realize that you only use the portion that's submerged. And they might just plug in for V, and the sharper students that know that they only want the submerged portion, they're going to get this wrong because they, they, they don't realize that they know how much is submerged here. Okay. okay, so that was a good mental picture that you painted here. The question was not asking for the weight exactly, it's the maximum weight. At which, so this is like a borderline case. You might have seen other problems like that, yeah. borderline cases, and you had a good mental picture for that. If we keep adding weight down here, then the buoy is going to keep sinking more and more until finally the buoy is completely submerged. Um, and then if we add even more weight, it can't float anymore. It's going to sink. Well, why does What's really happening here is, well, when we add more weight down here, we need a bigger buoyant force to keep things up. Well, that means we have to submerge more and more of this top buoy. The more that's submerged, the greater the buoyant force is. The more that's submerged of the buoy, the greater the buoyant force is. I guess that's why it's called a buoy, right? It's yeah. buoying this up down here. But once it's entirely submerged, um, it, doesn't have anything, it doesn't have anything more to add. Once it's entirely submerged, there's no way you can increase its buoyant force anymore. So what the picture really looks like now is in the borderline case, the buoy has, the water hasn't risen, the buoy has fallen until it's just entire, it's just barely completely submerged and now it's uh, keeping up the greatest weight that it possibly could. All right, so I think you're seeing now um, what we can do to, to keep working with, through the problem. So what would be our next step? Okay, so then we want to find the buoyant force of the buoy. Right, um, so let's work that out. Okay, so rho thousand times g and then the dimensions of the buoy are one by one by three. So I three meters cube. Um, so it'd be 30,000. 30, what were the dimensions? Uh, one, one by one by three. One by one by three meters? Mm -hmm. And so your buoyant force was? Uh, was 30,000. 
That's right. So I think the problem reminded us that the density of the water was a thousand. Yes. Yeah. Then here's G, and here's the volume of the portion that is submerged using this formula. Okay. So uh, then we'll plug that in here. Thirty thousand. Positive or negative? Uh, it's positive. Positive. Thirty thousand. 